Tippy time, my dammies, Top Cat here, and welcome back to the channel. With a new stasis sword about to drop in a few weeks, I wanted to take stock of the current sword meta to answer a few questions. What's got the best overall damage? All damage tests will be done against this big boy here. Head to head, what is better, glaive versus sword? What is the most economic in terms of ammo? What is the most versatile? But most importantly, I wanted to find that fun factor. Yes, Malekith and I do want to make sushi out of this monkey here in one phase, but I do want to be grinning like a Cheshire as I do it. This video is segmented in the timeline if you're curious about a certain weapon. Please smash that thumbs at any point and all feedback is appreciated. Now this video isn't going from worst to best, but we are starting with the Black Talon, and it is the worst. Sad as this is, this void yeeting terror will have to stay in the Crucible. It's only really good for damage on the go. It's when you attack with it, this moves you forwards. So three swipes, and you'll be outside position of a well. And when I saw its true damage numbers, I nearly cried. Only clearing 1.17 million. The Woodline Zero is even more mobile a weapon, as we do need to sprint in order to activate the Tesseract's Blink Slice. However, this done significantly better in damage output, doing 1.69 Dirty Mind million. This got reworked recently, so now you can do a second attack immediately after the first. Whilst this won't be used in Crota, there are still multiple activities that you can bust this mama out. The Lament is king. It is the benchmark by what other swords are compared to. If you are new, head to Europa and do the quest now. Its McFlurry attack pumps out over 2 million damage, but it's not the damage that makes this king. It's the revved consumption trait. This heals us as we damage a target. It's the answer to the question, can I kill him before he kills me? Sword jewels are inherently dangerous, the Lament hungers for that danger. The thicker the target, the better it gets. It's also got Tireless Blade to help our ammo economy, and this chews up anti-barriers and spits them out. The Heart Shadow may appear to be some type of evil medieval coat rack, but it's actually the strongest of all our exotic swords. At 2.18 million, its heavy attack sends out projectiles that weaken. This effect lasts for 8 seconds and debuffs our target for 15%. Granted, this isn't as strong as the tractor cannon 30%, but we can also contribute to the damage. Its downsides are though, it doesn't heal, and it's not as good on ammo economy. Our second most legendary powerful sword is the Throne Cleaver. And it is reserved for those rainbow colored teeth titans. Against our ogre friend here, it pushed out a staggering 2.357 million damage. Ground and pound, followed by three light attacks, rinse and repeat. What makes this so strong is that we can craft it with enhanced surrounded. This buffs our sword damage by 41.75% when we have three enemies in close proximity. This is an 8 meter radius, but with this damage you're really going to want that resilience build or something like a woven mail or restoration for health insurance. The cat's cream however is the bequest. Acquired through the Deepstone Crypt raid, this adaptive frame is unique blasting 78 impact compared to the standard adaptive 68. With Surrounded, this pushes out 2.385 million. Any subclass can use this, which makes this so great. On top of which, this also rolls Relentless Strikes to feed us back ammo, making it excellent for those longer damage phases. Now other swords like the Nasridden can roll Surrounded. As standard, that's still a 35% damage bonus. But if luck or a Deepstone Crypt farm for a bequest isn't on the menu, I would highly recommend getting Season 20's Caretaker. It's acquired from the War Table at the Helm. You can pick up previous season's artifacts. And as you do activities, you can easily get engrams to farm out red borders to craft this. This is the poor man's bequest. It can roll Relentless Surrounded. 
it may do 100k less damage at 2285 but this damage is still third best damage overall and being solar it's got some better build versatility attorney's edge is strictly for the ogs but not to worry whilst this was good it's not great warlocks only and its main claim to fame is infinite guard making it a very good defensive sword being solo it also pairs really well with our solar subclass allowing us to chain both radiance and restoration bungo did give us a death razor it can roll enhanced surrounded but it does do less damage than both the caretaker and bequest so i chose to craft this with relentless strikes and whirlwind blade it does 1.987 milli thanks to whirlwind this increases its damage by 3% a strike, maxing out at 10 strikes for a 30% bonus. The smaller the pain just makes you meaner and keener, that's certainly the truth with the gold tusk. Running the same setup as the Death Razor, this pushes out another 150k over for a total of 2.137 million. This is because it's allowing us to swing a lot faster. It's also got a larger ammo capacity at 70. So together with Relentless Strikes, it is very, very hard to run out of ammo. Being a Hunter exclusive, I love to pair this with the Foe Tracer Exotic Helmet, which gives us that tier 4 harmonic surge after using our abilities. This Relentless Whirlwind combo has kind of been the standard for many a season. 3 or 6 Guardians, depending on the fire team required will generally two-face a boss fairly comfortably. The guillotine might have popularized this. Just in case has it, Abide the Return has it, and the Nas Redden have all jumped in on that bandwagon. The best world loop version, however, is the badass Geodetic. As outside of the bequest, it's the only adaptive to have a impact higher than 68, be it only marginally at 70. Up until now I've primarily been looking at raids and dungeons, but you can still play up close and personal in Nightfall 2. Even in tougher activities like Grandmasters, exotics like the Strongholds can be used as a very powerful tool. This maximizes guard stats on swords, you take reduced damage whilst blocking with your sword, Rapidly defeating targets after blocking shots with a sword grants us restoration for a duration determined by the number of shots blocked. I've run GMs on Solar, Strand and Stasis and no matter the element, these puppies chew up champs. The combination of Stasis and Lament was probably my favourite as I could overload with my melee, unstop with my grenades and the Lament was always primed to dual barriers. The others of course really work well here too, particularly Strand with Banner of War, it's just made to operate swords. But when it comes to selecting your swords, you need to consider ammo economy. Adapters heavy cost for ammo to use, so it's actually 14% less economic to use for its damage versus ammo. Vortex costs 6 ammo, so its heavy is 37% less economic. And no surprise, really, casters are the worst at 40% costing 5, however this is soon to be adjusted on March 5th. However, every time I use one of those weak ass bay blades, I feel disappointed. Now when it comes to selecting blades, I'm going to make this really, really simple. It's jagged or bust. All other options offer mega amounts of ammo rewards, or even worse, half and half. I came here to cut shit up, and in most cases, a rally flag is going to give me more than enough ammo. Now here's where my opinions might diverge a little. Knowing what we know about ammo economy, we're not really encouraged to use our heavy attacks unless it's on, say, a Hunter's Lightweight Sword, or a Titan's Aggressive Sword. So Swordmaster's Guard actually cuts our defensives like Ripley did her baby. That's a bad month. But it does triple our charge rate. But on everything else, I would actually suggest Heavy Guard. This pushes our resistance to 70 and our endurance to 60. 
This makes it a lot more versatile a weapon for when we're not just standing directly in front of Prota, just holding down that forward and melee. The Zephyr is currently our only stasis sword, but we will have a new one shortly. I imagine this will soon be Eclipse, but Cold Steel is its draw card. It's also unique being a seasonal sword. It's pretty much Chill Clip the sword. It's actually pretty decent at tackling both overloads and unstops, but in anything you're 20 light under in, you're going to notice you have a lot of ammo shortages as it's only really putting out an additional 5% damage bonus. Now in the past I've thought incandescent on a sword was kind of stupid, about as stupid as Gaul thinking we gave two shites about what happened to the speaker. You're an Alron Hubbin cosplay wannabe at best, I'm glad you were killed off. But I thought, is what's the point of singeing something you're just going to cut away? But if enhanced and compiled with a solar subtree, this can actually be a very powerful trait. We use Ashes to give our Enhanced Caretaker or Throne Cleaver more Scorch stacks. This makes easier ignitions, eruptions makes them bigger, and Char spread Scorch. So after uh, eating my words, one swipe and I can clear both Miners, Mages, and Minis. I love how cost effective it is, but also I just love that big shit eating grin it puts on my face. Now the Abide and Just In Case can also get Incandescent, but honestly if it ain't enhanced I wouldn't even bother. Standard Incandescent is kind of like having yourself a biscuit, if it doesn't have chocolate on it, what's the point? Now the Throne Cleaver had one more monster perk that I believe was getting slept on. Don't instantly dismiss on guard. I recommend having one in your bolt. This gets a 30% damage for simply swapping to it. It's active for 2.5 seconds, but this is enough time for one heavy and two lights. This is an extremely efficient way to use your ammo. It's really fun, just absolutely decimating mages, minis, and champions. The Thin Precipice at first glance is exciting. It's taken, ooh, cool. It is strand, so it works well in the seasoned artifact. But having recrafted 20 plus swords for this video, I could only really find one that made this sword unique. With Billion Charge, whilst you're receiving damage whilst guarding, this temporarily increases your sword's lunge distance. This increases our lunge distance by 80%. Now there's no need to enhance this, but it does pair well with counterattack. Upon blocking an attack, we are granted a 50%, yes 50% damage bonus for 2.5 seconds. Whilst this may seem niche and kind of fiddly, it is stupendously fun. Yet the sword isn't really like a must have, I do like it, I do use it when I'm keen for a little bit of a muck around. So if you've got the space, craft it, have fun with it, yeet it back in there. Let's talk speed. Through my gameplay this week, it became evident to me how much faster I cleared things. Sword builds play very similar to glaive builds. Whenever I'm glaiving, it does feel like I'm clearing enemies quickly. But with a sword in hand, the difference was night and day. Swords were easily twice as fast. But what about defense? A glaive shield takes over a minute to charge up without any of those shooty shoot perks. And at full charge it's only lasting for 10 seconds. Now our swords do only block for 7 seconds, however unlike myself they are ready to go in 3 seconds. Energy transfer on the face of it seems good for running guns. It feeds your class ability whilst blocking. At standard it's not really worth it as it won't feed you back a full ability charge by the time your guard has run out. If enhanced however, it will. I'm sure there is a good build in here somewhere, but as much as I like it, it's hard to pick this over something like Relentless Strikes. The Dragon Cult Sickle can roll chain reaction. It's Strand, so with this season's artifact you can imagine the chaos you can create. I love using it in gems this season, it can roll with Splice. We cast our class ability and for the next 5 targets we hit in an 8 second window, they will get severed. 
with that 40% damage resist running this sword in GMs has felt very comfy. Saying that, ammo was still a bit of an issue. These caster frames will be getting an economy bump on March 5th, reducing the cost of heavy attack from 5 to 4 ammo. Only time will tell if this makes a significant change or not. Currently, I just don't want to use this as every time I throw out that Destructo disc, I just see ammo going down the drain. Now, both the Dragon Cult and the Chevalier Fire will be getting a heavy attack buff by 16%. Which is good because this rolls both Repulsor Brace and Destabilizing Rounds. It's currently mid, and with these buffs, it could go up to just kind of mid. The OG Crown Splitter is still one of our better Vorpal weapons. It can pump out 1.829 million. Now, Vorpal mightn't be the strongest option for a heavy weapon anymore. But this damage option is still really good for burst weapon damage. For situations like here in the Deepstone Crypt, or champions that are only going to take a few hits to kill. For our 30th anniversary swords, you only really need one go fast stick. So on the other half, I actually like to run Repulsor Brace. I like this mainly on my Void Hunter or Void Titan, as they both have easy ways of making volatile. Hence an easy way to activate my Repulsive Brace. And Relentless gives me that sweet ammo econ. My Half Truth is crafted with the Aegis Edge perk that is so famous. We can lunge great distances by swapping to it. It's primarily used for utility in between arenas. But there are a few encounters like here in the Root of Nightmares where it does come in handy. Now obviously we've got a lot of options so I'm going to try and need to break this down a little bit further. So I got a top 8 for you. The Throne Cleaver has a lot going for it. I like it for that burst damage. But at number 7 I also really do like it for that incandescent like to make things hot. The Geodetic will be great for your everyday sword encounters. Half Truce we want that for our speed. And number four, the Heart Shadow, it is tremendous power. Okay, this season we really don't need it as much with that awesome weekend and the artifact, but it is still good if you ever get off solar. Gold Tusk pumps out mad damage in a flurry of strikes. Lemon doesn't have the best damage, but it's still great damage. Its main draw card is that healing. The bequest is goat damage, hands down. Farm it, get it, bust a nut and cut. Hopefully you found this video helpful. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Make sure you thumb it if you liked it, sub if you're new, and until next time, tippy time my damies, what a time.